Hi guys, it's a Sunday evening. Just coming back from a little walk, but I thought I'd show you. This is the closest I've ever gotten to a uh, uh, my wedding. One of the aspects of it. He's gone for a long time. But since it's happening right on my road and we have to go back anyway, I thought I'd show you some of the setups, some of the things. Very nice, very nice. And then of course over here, the important area. <laughs> this is where all the food is being prepared. Lots of people, very hungry people. Look at that giant walk, wow. That is a giant, giant walk. Now while many of you might say, oh, that wedding party looks beautiful, I would tell you that food area looks even more beautiful <laughs> to me. Just a giant walk filled with oil, people getting food prepared, ready to go. That's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> like I said, I've seen weddings before, but I don't like being intrusive. I don't want to get up in some stranger's face. Uh, look at me, I'm an American. Let me take a picture of your, of your uh, happiest day. But it was uh, fortunate that that one was, like I said, right on my street, right here. We live right there, next to the Sunflower Restaurant. So I figured I'd uh, spend a couple minutes and show you that. You can hear the music. You, we've been able to hear the music from the wedding all day. Uh, but it hasn't been a big deal. Didn't uh, interrupt my sleep or anything. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. All right. I'll talk to you guys uh, later. Hi, right, guys. It's now a uh, Monday morning. We're down here, as you can see, from uh, by the little shrine they have in the middle of the roundabout. It's always busy when I come down here. You wouldn't think that uh, a little shrine set in the middle of a busy road would be as busy as it is, but it is. So you can see people making their offerings to Buddha. part of the uh, Royal, uh, this is right across the street from the Royal Gardens, this is all part of the Royal uh, Residence Complex, see it's very nice. Very nice, very well kept, lots of shade, hello. And we shall not wait. They let the cars pass. I took care of the uh, busy work this morning. Went to uh, went to three schools. Put in my CV packets. Hopefully I'll be getting a call from one of them soon for an interview. I have dabbled with the idea of moving to uh, Phnom Penh just because the ease of getting a job there is uh, significantly higher. <clears throat> Simply because it's much bigger and there are tons and tons of schools. Matter of fact, they're, they have a website for the job postings in uh, Phnom Penh, and that thing is packed with with uh, schools looking for teachers. I'm not quite there yet, though. I'd like Siem Reap. Well, I, I would like to stay in Siem Reap. But like a lot of things in life, circumstances might not 
let me do that. Not pulling the trigger yet, though. I'm just saying. It's kind of a good option. It's kind of a good thing to know that uh, if something happens and I don't have or can't find a job here for whatever reason, maybe just not the right time of year, nobody's contracts are up yet, you know, things like that. If that I always have that option, I can just go there and be working uh, within a week. This is the Heritage Walk right here. Uh, a new mall complex that recently opened up. They have a Starbucks, Domino's, several floors as you can see I've not yet been inside because I've never I've never really been much of a mall person <laughs> I have a feeling whatever they have in there for sale that I might want I'd be able to find it elsewhere probably much cheaper Wow, oh, they have a Swenson's in there, I see. Heritage Walk. What they're calling it. Huh, no smoking. No guns. No dogs and cats mating. <laughs> Actually, just no dogs or cats allowed. But yeah, it's a pretty big complex. It's a... I also know inside here somewhere is what is considered to be the best bookstore in Siem Reap. Uh, Monument Books. They have all different types of uh, books, obviously. Brick and mortar bookstore. The Heritage Walk. Yeah. That was just starting to be built uh, when I first arrived. Shortly after my first walk down here, as a matter of fact. They were just breaking all the ground and they had some semblance of a structure, but it wasn't anything recognizable. But yeah, less than a year, they got this all built and done. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice uh, building. And they got down there, they got underground parking. Nice. Phone shops, of course. Hawaii, I think that's called. Hawaii. Whatever it is, it's a, it's a, it's a company from China uh, that's not allowed to sell their phones in the United States. It's actually the brand of phone I got uh, Sing Lai when we were phone shopping. You can check that out in my uh, previous videos. Because it was a good deal. And it's a really, really nice phone. So if we went down that way, if we continue down that way, that would be where my former guest house is when I first stayed here. Uh, right down, right down that way would be the Tassam guest house. If you plan on coming over here and you have not yet, 
made any accommodations for your first few days until you find an apartment or if you're coming over here just to visit uh, I can I can safely recommend the Ta Sum guest house uh, T A S O M I believe it's called it's a really really nice guest house you can go down to like my first videos way at the bottom of my video list and one of the first ones I made was a little tour of my room uh, it was a hundred dollars for two weeks which is a really good price and uh, the staff friendly speaks good English they can also help set up all your tours of places you might want to go uh, I actually took my tour of the floating village and Angkor Wat through their service and uh, I had pleasurable experiences both times the tour guides are knowledgeable and they are happy to answer questions they show you all the things you need to see but then there's also they allow you plenty of time to just go wandering around on your own which is important to me especially when I went to Angkor Wat I like uh, I like to hear about it and I like the things he was showing me but I was itching sometimes to just leave the little tour group and go on my own and there was plenty of time for that so yeah I would recommend Tassan I got mine through booking.com where I found that deal $99 for two weeks I paid when I got there hello best tuk-tuk driver right there yeah you heard him best tuk-tuk driver see him read and when I got there uh, because through booking.com you do not have to pay in advance you deal with the uh, the accommodation that you uh, select and when I got there yep that's all it was it was actually $99 so gave him a hundred they gave me four thousand real back rooms are clean it's not loud or rowdy I have a big open balcony for you to sit out and enjoy the outside and have a coffee I met some people I'm still friends with today through there most of the people I know here actually I had met in that guest house from all different countries and free breakfast if you get up early enough when it's really it's a really good breakfast too they have several choices it's made fresh every day it includes a coffee or a juice oh yeah you really can't beat that yeah, Japanese restaurant I like the decor yeah that's pretty cool Pretty cool. Uh, over there, that's the first mall here, Lucky Lucky Mall, right there. <coughs> uh, people like Lucky Mall because it's nice and air conditioned. If you're walking around, you're away from home, you're getting a little hot and sweaty, you can just go in there for a few minutes and literally chill out. Yeah, this is just another way to the uh, <clears throat> downtown area. Thought I'd take you a different path than normal. Got a fruit shop, little convenience store type place. Of course, the old uh, massage place, of course. And you can check out the prices there. They offer a little bit of everything. And if you get thirsty, get yourself a coconut water. Fresh, right from the coconut. I don't know where 
we're going today. But uh we'll get we'll get up to something I'm sure. Up ahead is simply the downtown area that you've seen a bunch of times. So I will talk to you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, one final thing I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> uh, somebody left me a comment about visas. And they were absolutely correct. Uh, if you're coming over here to stay, when you get to the airport, there are only uh, there are two types of visas you want. You want. Uh, tourist visa or an E visa. An E visa is also referred to sometimes as a business visa. It's also referred to as an ordinary visa. Those terms mean the same thing. It's an e-visa. Uh, even I've mistakenly said you can get your EB or EG visa when you arrive, and that's technically incorrect. You will just get the e-visa. The designations for those, like EG, ER, or EB, are the extension types. Whether you get the e-visa or the tourist visa, your initial ones will be good for only 30 days. If you have a tourist visa, you may extend it one time for 30 additional days in country. And then that's it. If you wish to stay longer, you will have to leave the country and come back and get another tourist visa. If you have an E-type visa, once your 30 days is, has expired, you will then have to go to a travel agency to get your visa extension. And I won't go into all of those, but I will say if you need an EB, if you've already found a job after your first 30 days and you need the EB so you can get your work permit, you will need documentation, a letter from your school or a place of employment. For the EG or the ER, which is retirement, you may be required for additional documentation, but that depends on several factors that I'm not going to get into in this video. <clears throat> but if you have questions, I may be able to answer them. So yeah, that's the process. If you plan on staying here long term, get an E-Visa. If you plan on just coming over here for a month or less, just get the tourist visa. Yeah, that about sums it up. All right. Now, this time I mean it. I will talk to you guys in the next one.